Hey, what's up? Stunts Joker here. Today I wanted to bring you my 900 series buyer's guide. Now that's right, we all know by now that the 900 series is here from NVIDIA. The GTX 900 series, we've seen the 980, the 970 come out. We know the, the clock speeds and the benchmarks, and we know how all those are performing. Uh, in case you don't know, you can go back and look at my previous video where I went over the benchmarks and specs and things like that. But today what we're going to be primarily discussing is which 900 series card might be right for you because at the end of the day, you know, you've got all these decisions to make and, you know, it could be a little bit overwhelming at times. You don't know, well, do I want to get the reference card? Do I want the, the Asus, the MSI, this one or that one? This one's got the higher overclock, but this one looks nicer. You know, what is the most important thing uh, to you at the end of the day? But I'm going to be talking about the things that I think are the most important and some things that you should really probably ignore going into this. Um, one thing I'm not going to be covering at all in this video are clock speeds because a 980 is a 980 at the end of the day. It's still the same processor. It's not going to change whether you've gotten a Zotac or you got an Asus or a reference EVGA. It doesn't matter. A 980 is a 980 is a 980. And that's the same for the 970 and every other chip out there. Um, some manufacturers will sell, try to sell you on the point of this is the super clocked card or the OC edition or the amped edition or whatever kind of marketing gimmick they want to throw onto it. But at the end of the day, all of this means that they're putting a very small, mild overclock onto a card out of the box so that you don't have to do it yourself. And these overclocks are usually only by like maybe like 50 hertz or something like that, which any person out there, I don't care how amateur of a builder you are, I don't care if you've never overclocked before in your life, you can take a card that is not overclocked and you can get it to what their super clock is in a matter of seconds. It's literally like three or four clicks in MSI Afterburner and you're super clocked and ready to go. So I'm not going to be rating these cards or looking at them based Based on that, the main factors I'm going to be looking at are temperatures and noise levels because that's really all there left is to look at these cards because a chip is a chip is a chip. So you've got 980s in all these cards, you've got 970s in all these cards, and the coolers between the 980s and 970s are pretty much identical across the board. Now in order to keep on track today because I am going to be throwing out some numbers, I have my super advanced technology here to keep me on track. Um, I act Actually, it's really not that advanced. I had this written on a notepad, but I thought it would look better for the video if I took a picture of the notepad with my iPad and then put all that information right here for you to see. In case you want to actually see all of this, you can just pause right now and then you can watch it all yourself. And you don't even need to stay tuned for the rest of the video because I'm going to go over this stuff here right now. And why won't that cancel out? Okay, here we go. Now we're back. All right, so to start things off, we're going to go with just the basic reference model. We all know these things. It's that silver metal box. They really don't offer a whole lot in terms of cooling. Uh, they got the nice back plate on it this time around, and they're sticking with the same cooler they, that they introduced back with the Titans and the Titan Black and the Titan Z, um, you know, with that, you know, polycarbonate window and just the steel basic shroud. Not a whole lot going on there in order to keep the card cool. Uh, when running under load, and that's all how I'm going to be doing all of these, by the way. This is all temperatures and noise levels under full load. Because I'm not really too interested in idle. Most, pretty much every uh, cooler at idle is going to be pretty much whisper silent anyway. Um, actually, one of them will even be more quiet than the others for sure. But I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but for the reference card that's running at about 41 decibels, uh, under full load, which is pretty loud. That's honestly the loudest of all of the ones that we're going to be looking at today at 41 decibels. So the reference card is a little bit louder. Um, a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's running off of a single fan that just you know spins in there and is trying to cycle all that hot air out the back of the case through the rear exhaust on the I/O shield. Um, and and it shows because the card under full load is actually running at 78 degrees Celsius, uh, which is pretty warm. Um, you know, obviously the card's going to operate fine, even though it's a reference cooler. It's got the nice cool bling bling, you know, GeForce GTX light on the side. Um, but other than that, there's really not a whole lot going for it unless you are a modder and this is something you're just looking to take apart anyway to do like water cooling or something like that. Um, other than that, really no reason to go for a reference card unless you need to save the $20, $30 that you would have spent on an aftermarket cooler. Uh, coming up after that, sticking with EVGA, we're going to go to their ACX 2.0 series cooler, which they've sort of reworked this year. They say the fans are a little bit better. Uh, I do know that the shroud is looking a lot nicer. I like on the 980, they've got a completely all black shroud. It's like a, almost like a, like a, a machined 
black or, or brushed aluminum almost type of look and it's really really sweet looking i like the look of the acx cooler uh, I have heard that, it's, that, can, that it can be a little bit loud under load, um, but to be honest, it's tied with a lot of the other uh, noise levels in the cards I'm going to be talking about today, running at 39 decibels, which is really not all that bad, uh, and coming in at 73 degrees Celsius, and of course that is under load. Um, so pretty decent temperatures from the ACX cooler, uh, about what I expected. They're not, you know, this cooler is not going to blow anyone away, um, but it's going to do the job pretty well. Uh, moving on now to the MSI Gaming Series, which is obviously I'm a fan of. I got, you know, two MSI 780s. I think they're absolutely fantastic. They keep my cards cool. Um, and tied with the ACX, it's running at 39 decibels. But beating it temperature-wise, you know, they're, going, they're bringing it down to 68 degrees Celsius. So it's getting under 70 degrees Celsius now, um, you know, under full load, which is pretty impressive. They got the new Twin Frozer 5 cooler, uh, which you can see here with the nice black and red gaming thing they're sticking with with the dragon and stuff like that they sort of reworked the look of the cooler but the design is pretty much more or less the same as far as functionality goes uh coming up after that is the asus strix which is more formally known as the asus direct cu2 they're still calling it the direct cu2 but now it's the strix series which i really don't understand basically they're trying to make the graphics card look like an owl um i guess it looks kind of cool um, I mean, across all of these cards, actually, it seems like the black-on-black -black look has become very popular, and pretty much every manufacturer out there is doing that. Um, now, one thing impressive about this card is that when it's running under full load, the noise level is only at 29 decibels. That's 10 decibels lower than any of these other cards I'm talking about. And for that, you're getting 71 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good. That's better than the reference card. That's better than the ACX, not better than the MSI. But at 29 decibels, you know, if you are like the kind of person that wants a really, really quiet computer, then you might want to go with the, AC, the ASUS Strix. Um, but I'll tell you why I wouldn't. The reason for that is they're doing something very different this time around, um, where when your computer is idle and you're not in a game, these ASUS Strix fans actually shut down completely to zero RPMs, not spinning at all. So the, despite the fact that the ASUS Strix is doing pretty good when it's under load, when you're at idle, your GPUs are actually running at around 47 degrees Celsius, which is pretty damn warm, especially for a single GPU setup. I have to imagine on these test beds where I'm getting these numbers from, which are, I'm getting my numbers from Tech Power Up and Guru 3D, by the way. I will put links down in the description to those so you guys can go check out the numbers for yourself. Uh, but Oh, but, you know, 47 degrees Celsius is really, really warm for a single card. I can only imagine if you were running a dual GPU configuration like myself, it would be even more. Especially when you have multiple monitors mixed in, because something a lot of people don't know about with multiple monitors in, is in, in NVIDIA, is that in order to reduce screen flickering, they constantly keep the cards at their full clock speeds, even when you're idle on your desktop. So my top GPU might hover around like 45 degrees and the bottom GPU more around 35 degrees uh, because of the multiple displays. If I was to disable my second monitor and my TV, which I have hooked up as well and just went on a single, uh, single display, my GPU temperatures would probably drop by about 10 to 15 degrees because they would down clock then. Um, but if, if I was in that particular setup with the ASUS cards where the fans don't even spin, I could imagine with multiple monitors, my cards running at probably idle around 60 degrees Celsius. That's just speculation on my part. But if the fans aren't spinning, they're not going to stay cool. And for me personally, that's a deal breaker. I would avoid the ASUS Strix altogether, um, despite the fact that they are running pretty damn quiet and giving decent temperatures when under load. Uh, and finally, uh, for this list, actually a very big surprise to me, uh, and I'm going to link to a video here from uh, Jay's Two Cents, if you haven't heard of his channel, you should definitely go check him out. He did a really great overview of the Gigabyte 970, where he took this thing and overclocked it, took the core to over 1,500 megahertz. Absolutely amazing numbers to be able to overclock that much. If you remember in my previous video, I was talking about the really low TDP on these Maxwell chips and get, making them really big overclock there's a lot of potential there for overclock and he was able to do that and take it up to 1500 megahertz while keeping the temperatures around 60 degrees celsius uh and as far as the cooling on the card is concerned um they're running at around 39 decibels as well which seems pretty consistent across most of these uh and keeping it the coolest of the bunch despite being under full load at 39 decibels just like almost all these other cards 
Uh, it's coming in at 60 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely stunning. Um, I wasn't really a big fan of the Gigabyte coolers in the past, uh, but they've really gone ahead and they've redesigned it this time around. They've got an all black looking shroud. They got rid of that sort of transparent like piano black almost finish on it, which I really was not a fan of. And now it's just got a flat black finish. Uh, it looks nice and it seems to be performing awesome at 60 degrees Celsius under full load and then considering with the overclocking potential being able to take it up to 15 megahertz plus I guarantee you can get even more out of that if you wanted to go ahead and tweak the power settings as well so out of these cards based on what I've seen so far I think the gigabyte is probably the best seller because as I mentioned in the beginning of the video multiple times a 980 is a 980 it doesn't matter you know at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you're getting an MSI Asus gigabyte you're still getting the same 980 um, the difference really is the cooler. How cool can you keep your card? Because the cooler you can keep it, the longer it's going to last you, the better performance you're going to get out of it, and the more overclocking headroom that you're going to have if you're able to keep that chip as cool as possible. And it seems like from these numbers here that we're seeing from Tech Power Up and Guru 3D, and also the, some numbers from Jay's Two Cents, um, it really looks like the Gigabyte G1 Gaming is leading the pack right now in the 980 and the 970 race. Um, it'd be nice to see some more cards come out soon, um, but this seems like a pretty solid lineup of cards, uh, and I think if it was me right now buying a card, I might have to lean towards the Gigabyte, although I have never actually bought anything from them before, uh, but I've heard they're great, I've heard they got good quality, solid products, and the temperatures they're putting out speak for themselves. Uh, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, stick a like below, leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Are you thinking about getting a 980 or a 970? And if so, which brand are you leaning towards getting? Let me know down in the comments below because I, lo I love interacting with you guys. So please just let me know. And uh, as always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Joker Slunt or very quickly get back to my channel by going to JokerSlunt.com. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.